One of the most incredible leaders on earth was Alexander the Great, the king of Macedonia who conquered the great nation of Persia and expanded the Macedonian Empire to the east. Despite his reputation as a conqueror, Alexander was among the most beloved people by his countrymen and the people he conquered. This is why the circumstances of his death, which were extremely dubious and beneficial to some people around him, led the whole of Greece to wonder, was he ruthlessly murdered by one of his subjects, or did time decide that his time had come? This is what we're going to find out today. Welcome to History Facts. Today, I'm going to tell you what happened during the last 10 hours of Alexander the Great, along with the grim truth about his death that, until this day, has remained hidden. So, let's get started. Truth is not in the texts. Humanity has always used the texts our ancestors wrote to understand its past, documents created by the wisest and most influential people who feared being forgotten. This means that many people and generals around Alexander the Great published their memoirs and wrote their own accounts before meeting their deaths. Considering these ancient texts, we might think that they are a reliable source of information to discover the secret of Alexander the Great's end. But unfortunately, things are not as simple as they seem at first glance. The ancient texts might not be the key to understanding the death of Alexander the Great since each of the people surrounding Alexander had their own reputations to protect, so none of them would openly admit to regicide, not even after their deaths. Put another way, we can't even rely on anyone's written word. To understand the mystery of Alexander the Great's death, we must look much deeper into his life and assess his relationship with others. Which men and women did he really know? Was he loved or hated? And how many of his friends may have secretly conspired to assassinate him? That's the kind of information we need to understand his last tragic hours. The Monarch's Last Vacation in 323 BC, Alexander enjoyed a vacation in the luxurious metropolis of Babylon and Mesopotamia after years of wars and bloody battles. Since this city was considered one of the finest in the ancient Persian Empire, it was the perfect place for Alexander and his weary soldiers to spend a few weeks reveling in the pleasures of Babylon. But unfortunately, Alexander's return to civilization was not a bed of roses. As you probably know, Alexander spent 10 years fighting non-stop from his arrival in the Persian Empire and the invasion of the Indian frontier until he managed to depose the great king and seize his power for himself. However, each of Alexander's victories only diminished his soldiers' happiness. As Alexander's empire expanded, the Macedonian warriors became increasingly anxious to return home, prompting numerous desertion attempts that had to be put down. Having won numerous victories in Punjab and along the Indus River, Alexander and his men returned to civilization by traveling through a scorching desert that claimed the lives of thousands due to lack of water before finally being welcomed with open arms in Mesopotamia. So Alexander arrived in the city with a thirsty, hungry, battle-weary army that wanted to sleep in their beds and hug their children. Could he have been killed by one of his men who longed to return home? That could be a possibility. Alexander was a handsome young man who had a long life ahead of him. Even after conquering a large portion of the known world, his expansionist dreams had barely begun. The problem behind Alexander's ambition was that it was gigantic, and as long as he drew breath, his warriors would never know peace. In fact, he planned to establish trading towns along the Arabian coast and even build a port near Babylon to accommodate a new fleet. The victory was only a step away from being taken. But who still harbored the desire to fight on besides Alexander himself? Welcomed as King Alexander and his men were quickly welcomed in Babylon by the end of May, sheltered from the relentless summer heat. 
Fortunately, the city had all the comforts they needed to ensure their good rest. Water was everywhere thanks to the Euphrates River that flowed through the city's center, and the high walls protected the city from the dangers of the world. Wildlife outside the town was also abundant, so if they stayed, they would be able to exist for a long time. Among all the incredible things Alexander and his men encountered in Babylon, one always caused the Macedonians to marvel, the Hanging Gardens. One of the seven wonders of the ancient world was built by the greatest king of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar II. Despite the great comforts the palace offered, Alexander preferred to spend his day with his men rather than living in the city, so he spent his time in the royal tent or sailing on the river aboard a boat. Whether in the palace or camp, Alexander oversaw preparations for his Arabian expedition and put his soldiers through an intensive training program. Even the warships competed to win Alexander's favor and receive a golden crown for their excellent work. After a long day of training, Alexander decided to reward his soldiers with a majestic banquet to celebrate the end of their last campaign and the birth of a new one the expansion of Arabia, and this could have been the cause of Alexander's death. If Alexander was assassinated, as many historians suspect, the person responsible for killing him and stopping his expansionist plans must have been present at this banquet. The question is, who and when? Betrayal never comes from an enemy. Back to the banquet, the celebrations were filled with food and drink, including disproportionate amounts of wine and sacrifices, as one would expect from a royal feast. The guest of honor at the table was his fleet admiral, the Greek Nerkes, a loyal follower of Alexander, though not among those men who had followed him since childhood. According to the custom among civilized participants in a feast, only one began to drink in earnest once the meal was finished. The wine was a bit syrupy and could have a high alcohol content compared to today's vintages, so it was usually served diluted with water. But as soon as they finished eating, the Macedonians demonstrated their great reputation as drunkards by taking large quantities of alcohol until they passed out. Meanwhile, the master of ceremonies decided how much water to mix in the wine. Each cup was individual and servants used large ladles to serve them. This information is vital to understanding Alexander the Great's end, because it could be the clue historians need to find his murderer, the one responsible for poisoning Alexander's drink without anyone noticing. After toasting each of the 20 most important men at the party, Alexander went to an evening party with his friend Medeus, where he continued drinking before going to bed. The next day, things became much more complicated. The king woke up with a fever and spent much of his time in bed playing dice with his old friend Medeus, who accompanied him during dinner. He even tried to return to the feast, but felt a stabbing pain in his back that led him to let out a large cry and retire to bathe. The fever became more intense and the king's health gradually worsened. However, that did not stop Alexander from spending the day listening to Nerkus's anecdotes and instructing his officers to prepare for the upcoming Arabian campaign. On the morning of the third day, the Macedonians made their usually daily sacrifice to ask the gods to watch over their king and the army, but their prayers went unheeded. Unfortunately, Alexander's health worsened to such a degree that he had to be taken by boat to the Hanging Gardens, where he spent his last hours enjoying the calm coolness of the gardens. The fever continued to increase until one night it became evident to all present that the king was dying. Having lost his ability to speak, Alexander handed over his ring to his superior general, Perdiccas, temporarily transferring power to him. The situation caused a rumor to spread that the king was dead, leading to soldiers crowding the palace entrance, shouting and threatening to start a mutiny. Despite losing the ability to speak, Alexander did his best to greet each of his soldiers. All of them were allowed to visit him on the condition that they enter without cloak and armor. 
For this reason, a second door was opened through the dormitory walls so that the Macedonians could walk through more easily and pay their respects to their dying leader. When someone asked to whom he was leaving the kingdom, Alexander replied that he was leaving it to the strongest. But his most memorable answer was to Perdiccas's question. When do you wish divine honors to be done to you? The general asked. When all of you are happy, Alexander replied. With those words, one of the world's most fabulous kings departed the world, leaving a great void on the throne of Macedonia that would lead to a period of war and chaos that would ravage the land for 40 years. That's all for now. See you in the next video with another interesting topic.